Controller players that have went pro in Fortnite all share a few common traits within their settings, controller setups, and their practice. But let's see what they are. First, we have the settings. And on this page, I actually have a list of basically all the relevant controller pros, along with all of their recent settings. The majority of these guys all use linear, so I think when talking about pro settings, we're just gonna get rid of all the exponential players, and we're just gonna look at all the linear ones. Looking at all the pro linear settings like this, you start to recognize some trends, especially in the look sense. Literally only two out of the 17 don't use a 43 or 42 look sense. And on all the other categories, you can see there's a pretty narrow range they stay between. So going based off this information and in my own experience, here's what I think are some great settings that you can stick with. We got two build and edit, 43 look sense, nine ADS sense, no boost whatsoever, and my dead zones are 10. The real key part here is to stick with these settings for months or really even years. Doing that helps build really strong muscle memory, and you'll start to notice it, especially with consistency within your aim, building, editing, every aspect of the game. Because after after so long, you know exactly how far you need to move your crosshair. You know the exact thumbstick path for a triple edit. And these settings, along with everything else in this video, is meant for players that want to go pro in both builds and no builds. Literally all the same stuff applies. Moving on to the next section, we have setups, which means the controller, accessories, and holds. And I'm just going to state the truth. The best of the best controller players do use claw or paddles, and that's not really arguable. The only two current notable pros that don't use either is Elite Gold and Okus, who are still on the lower tier of the top pros. Like Elite Goal has won around $15,000 and Okus around $30,000. Well, we have Miro that's won $550,000 on Double Claw. Day at $300,000 on Right Claw. TRR at $160,000 on Paddles. I mean, it's really not even close. The Claw and Paddles pros are just way better. The good news about that is it's not actually that hard to learn Claw or Paddles. Claw is simply a grip where you bend your index fingers over the face buttons and you use them to click all the face buttons. Paddles are buttons on the back of the controller that you can map to do important face button actions. Well, both Claw and Paddles allow for is the ability to never move your thumbs off the stick. So instead of going off to click X and back onto aim, with claw you're doing it at the same time, and with paddles you're doing it at the same time. And that works within aiming, editing, building, all of the main mechanics. Claw is completely free as it's just a different hold, and paddles can be as low as $20. To learn either one, it's really all about practice and patience. Grind some edit courses with aim practice, and within a single day you can be somewhat comfortable. Within a week of playing a couple hours a day, you'll be pretty close to your old skill level, and within two weeks you will be better than you ever were before. From there, it's only up, and you now have the opportunity to progress much further. But this all comes with having optimized binds as well, which is honestly too much to cover in such a short time, so I'll be making a full new binds video soon. You want to make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. To get into specific controllers, there's really no clear winner when looking at the ones that pros use. Most of those that play Claw just use the standard console one, and the ones that play Pals either use a Scuff, an Xbox Elite, an Astro C40, or my personal favorite route is the two that use Strike Pack, which dives into the realm of building your own pro controller. When I say building, I mean buying accessories you like and putting them on a controller, which can sometimes include actual building. At this point, I have 25 controllers, including 10 PS4 and 5 PS5, and two of my top three favorite controllers are the ones that I built. My PS4 one has a grip, trigger stops, thumbstick grip, four paddles, and cost an extra $82 for me. I like it more than my $250 scuff impact. My PS5 one has instant triggers, clicky buttons, a thumb grip, a front and back grip, four paddles, and cost me an extra $107. I also like it more than my other two from pro controller companies that cost well over $300. However, I realize that not everyone is into electronics and stuff like that and doesn't actually want to take apart their controller. So if you're that person you don't mind spending the extra money, my favorite pre-built controller company is Cinch Gaming. I main their PS4 controller, which is the one showing in this gameplay right now, and they actually gave me a 5% off code, which is Carter 2K. And with that being said, all the attachments and all the links for everything will be in the description if you're interested in picking up any of the accessories I've mentioned or want to check out Cinch Gaming. That brings us to the final and probably most important section, practice. Practice is really what makes pros go pro in the first place. Even with the best settings, the most expensive controller, it doesn't matter unless you practice. To become pro, there's a few different types of practice you have to do consistently, with the first one being the most obvious, mechanics practice. This is doing edit courses and aim practice to constantly improve those areas, and there's tons of maps out there for that. The next type of practice is by playing. Playing scrims is basically a simulated tournament game so you can get practice against other really good players. Playing arena will teach you how to fight really high-skilled players. The entire goal of playing practice is to fight high skilled players and not bot. Playing any normal game mode or even creative against just randoms will improve your skill much slower than playing against people that are better than you. Then the last type of practice is VOD review, which is where most people are unwilling to put in the work and effort. This is basically watching back your gameplay, usually in replay mode, and seeing what went wrong when you died. After a while, you start to pick up on trends that led to certain outcomes, like maybe every time you boxed up in only a one by one, you die. Recognizing trends like that leads to the next time you're in that situation 
in game you pick up on what happened and now you know that you shouldn't do that and you take a different route so maybe next time instead of boxing up in just a one by one you build like a four by four and that works out a lot better it's kind of tedious to watch back every mistake but it's the part that really separates the good players from the pros so let me put all this into play and try to win an arena game The aim settings are pretty good so far. It didn't work out that game. I literally couldn't find guns. I don't claim to be a pro, but I do know how others became pro in what they do, which is why I'm telling all of you. One thing I haven't mentioned yet, though, is ping. And that's a great example of ping. Ping is unfortunately just mostly luck based on where you were born. Realistically, once you get above like 80 ping, there's really no hope in becoming pro. Stuff like that happens where they just get your wall first try every time. At a certain point, there's just nothing you can do. Even at like 50 to 60 ping, which is usually what I'm on, that's really pushing the limit. I think right now in Fortnite, there's only a handful of players that play above 40 ping and are successful. Almost all competitive players are playing competitive because they have low ping. So if you're trying to play competitive, you're gonna fight a lot lot of low ping players and when they can just shoot through your walls run through all your builds they can take your wall first try they get builds down inside your box before you can it's basically helpless and i learned that like three years ago which is the last time that i really even tried to play comp you are at a massive disadvantage if you can't take walls and your wall gets taken first try every time unfortunately that's just how fortnite works I mean, when you can't get walls, you can't even get through people's builds. You have to play so weird, and it's just not something that I enjoy. I have to call it there. I literally can't stay sane playing arena. But with enough practice, the tips do work. I don't even play enough to be able to go pro. I haven't touched this game in six days since the new Call of Duty came out. With that being said, if this video helped you at all, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And I do hope to catch you in the next video.